hi, a very good afternoon and welcome to webinar by Singapore Management University, Executive Development. So at SMU Executive Development, we accelerated our capacity to move into the virtual space to continue to support the development needs of our participants and clients. We are glad to have uh, recently resumed the delivery of some program face-to-face -face with all the safety measures in place, of course. So do find out more about our upcoming program on our website, exc.smu.edu.sg, or feel free to email or call us. We are pleased to have uh, Professor Kapil in just a minute. Uh, the very, very well sought after Professor Kapil is a professor of marketing and director of the uh, Retail Center of Excellence at the Lee Kong Chen School of Business, SMU. Uh, so later, uh, Professor Kapil will take about uh, 40 to 45 minutes in his presentation. If there's any questions during the webinar, please share your questions uh, using the uh, chat feature so that all of us can see your questions. Uh, so, and also, of course, we will leave the last 10 minutes for Q&A session. So please make yourself comfortable and hope you enjoy the session. I'll pass the control to uh, Professor Kapil now. Thank you. Thank you, Wee Hong. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everyone. I know it's, it's a busy time of the day just after lunch. So I hope I can keep you awake. Um, the agenda is very simple. Uh, I'm going to spend about half an hour, 45 minutes max on these two uh, items, you know, trying to understand the customer perspective. What are the customers telling us across the globe and how are they coping up with COVID? And what are the implications of that for retailers and manufacturers? And then, you know, uh, we'll also go through a few examples of what companies are doing, how are they coping up, how are they leveraging digital and social uh, media across the globe in trying to adapt uh, during this uh, very challenging time. So without much ado, let's talk about the customer perspective. In terms of sentiments, we know that it's, it's you know, the world economy is facing a lot of challenges. Uh, there was a survey done uh, quite recently by Counter Media with more than a few thousand people. Most people, as to be expected, are facing financial concerns. They are looking for discounts. But more beyond that, they're also asking questions about their brands. You know, how helpful are you now? What are you doing as a brand? What are the concrete actions you're taking? What are the sh information you're sharing? And quite fascinatingly enough, a lot of customers are actually saying that, hey, how brands behave now will actually determine how I relate to them now and in the future. And in fact, as a warning sign for a lot of companies, 33% of the customers have already switched brands given the behavior of the brands. That's the sentiment part. How are consumers behaving? Uh, no surprises, tech has become uh, a hot favorite. More and more of them are actually downloading apps. Uh, curbside pickups have increased. Home deliveries have become more than double. Browsing time has shot up. Uh, surprisingly, TV time also, that includes Netflix, has gone up. And more and more people are spending more time on social media. In fact, if you look through like you know, the consulting reports across whether it's Bain or uh, you know, any consulting firm you take, there are, these sentiments are repeated all across. So it's not just one source of information. I see some concerns about, can you guys hear me now? Hi, we can't really hear you at all, Professor. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there could be some problem with the uh, system or maybe the, um, or some problem with the uh, audio system. Oh, so sorry, Professor. To no, no. Uh, now, can you hear me? Thank you oh, excellent. Okay. I'll stand a little close and, uh, uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, going back, you know, what I was saying that there is all this information that we see, it's quite fascinating how consistent uh, the same sentiments are being shared across different consulting companies in different parts of the globe. Uh, whether you look at China, Japan, India, France, Canada, Italy, etc. everywhere the concerns, there are four key concerns that consumers are voicing. Number one is, of course, safety. Number two is income. Number three is, how do I cope with working from home? And number four is, beyond business. And already we have been through the COVID uh, era for more than six months in different parts. You start seeing the implications of these consumer behavior concerns. Safety has meant that physical imprint in terms of retail or uh, other outlets has gone down and more and more people are moving towards digital. What has meant, meant for companies in general, you can see already, if you look at the stock market, companies with bigger omni-channel performance, 
or streaming media are doing well, theaters, halls, and offline only retailers are suffering. Income stress has basically translated into more and more people are focusing on essentials and becoming more and more cost conscious. What this has meant is that grocery companies, or value merchants are doing much better than high end restaurants, department stores, uh, and also, uh, you know, what has happened with the, whether it's groceries or other companies is that the assortment size has shrunk because there have been supply chain challenges also. Work from home, you know, the boundaries between work and life have blurred. Uh, and one after effect of that has been that home office equipment sales have gone up, leisure wear has gone up, and formal wear has, I mean, contrary to what I'm wearing because I'm not at home right now, but a lot of people are investing more in pajamas rather than suits. Uh, the last word, very interesting concern is also that com consumers are asking now, what is my brand doing? How is it behaving with the community in general, but also how are they treating their employees? Against this background, you know, with the physical store, you can see these are examples from all over the world. On top left hand, you see this is an example of a store in Singapore. On the bottom left hand, you see uh, American Eagle in the US, that's Europe, a restaurant, uh, you know, with all these uh, transparent screens. And in India, Fab India, basically, you can see that masks are the, uh, the standard of the day. So against all of this, how do we leverage digital and social? What do these technologies provide us? Uh, you can see, you know, for just a casual browsing of the headlines will tell you that, you know, companies that are enabling SMEs or other retailers to go online have been doing very well. So Shopify is an excellent example. At the start of the year, their revenue had grown up 47%. Now it's up to from 470 to 750 million. It's surging. Alibaba has been doing very well in China. Tmall announced a luxury outlet. I mean, it's quite fascinating because the luxury segment was always very resistant to embracing digital technologies. And now Tmall is, has launched and it's doing very well. Uh, the best example of uh, even the diehard companies actually deciding to go online is Aldi. Aldi is a discount retailer and uh, they have been quite famous for saying that online does not work for us. But when the UK down, uh, when the UK shutdown happened, uh, Aldi actually ended up tying up with Deliveroo for a 30-minute grocery delivery with minimum order. And you see the same trend, click and pick, whether it's Tesco, Sainsbury. Uh, along with this, uh, another trend that has happened is social commerce. You know, um, various headlines, whether you look at uh, South China Morning Post or um, Wall Street Journal or Forbes, anywhere, a lot of companies are talking about this. Uh, what is uh, social commerce in the first place? Uh, so to a little background, you know, there was a very fascinating announcement by Facebook uh, and uh, when in, the, in the first quarter of this year, and they, I'll read this out uh, verbatim, Mr. Zuckerberg signaled his intention this year to blend the company's advertising business model with e-commerce, enabling users to buy advertised products without ever having to leave the platform. To me, that is a very important signal because if Facebook says that, hey, we want to be an e-commerce provider also, that tells you they're also seeing things which are very important for us as a, as a faculty, students, or business personnel. This is not surprising uh, so because you know, the, the penetration of social media across the globe is incredible. And not only that, people spend a lot of time. And we're talking billions, we're not even talking millions. So what exactly, why? A lot of research has shown that so, social media influences customers' decision-making to a significant extent. In fact, whether you're younger or older, I mean, if you're younger, between 25 to 34, it's almost half, more than half your decisions for purchasing and consumption are determined by what you see on social media. So the question becomes very important, what is social commerce? A simple view of thinking about it will be, social commerce is basically, hey, you're selling something on social media. This is an example of what Target is doing on social media and on Instagram. You know, you, when they have these pictures, you can actually click on them and they can direct you to the Target store. And you know, along with the prices and you can purchase. But it's a little more than just selling. Uh, in fact, if you look at the history of media, you know, there are two distinct groups. Uh, one is like, you know, with the way we progress, whether it's billboards, radio, TV, it's been it's a simple linear evolution that has been the content kept on becoming richer and richer. When first we could see, but we could not hear. Then we could hear, but we could not see. Now we could see and hear, because black and white then it became colored, and you know, if anybody has ever tried it, there is also 3D TV. 
the last two decades or so, we have seen the emergence of social media and the main difference has been it allows a higher degree of interaction. So for example, if I don't like a particular company earlier, the company had mega advertising budgets and they could go and spread their word all over print, radio, billboard, etc. I as a consumer couldn't say anything. Now if I'm not happy with a company, I can actually go and voice my opinion and if it is strong enough, it can go viral and it can reach millions of people. Uh, so against this background, social media, social commerce is not just about uh, selling, but it's also about informing, engaging, serving, and understanding customers to create relationships with them. Uh, what does this mean? Inform, serve, engage, and even perhaps think about how do you rethink your business model. Uh, if you look at all four of these options, what you will also see is that the effectiveness what uh, research is showing is greater for companies who are doing more engagement and rethinking their business models, but the investments required are also higher. So now what I want to do is I will share with you a few examples. You know, whether it's inform is concerned, it's, it's very simple. We all know that you know, global brands or local brands have been using Instagram, Facebook, etc., to share and interact with customers. Uh, you know, Lululemon has, was one of the pioneers in apparel business to go ahead and create this little movement based on fitness. Here's a snapshot of yoga. Uh, Sephora with uh, Rihanna and her own brand have been, and this is, a, this is one of those uh, posts which went viral and got a lot of likes. Nike took another, a very fascinating uh, twist. They became more and more as motivators. How do we motivate people to become physically fit? But this was before COVID. When COVID came in, a lot of this changed. And you see there has been a marked difference in the ways brands have shaped and respond to COVID and even just on the simple stuff of how you inform. There are three uh, specific examples. Crocs, a company that was almost dead about uh, six, seven years ago, they launched this whole campaign that we are sharing a free pair for healthcare workers. And it was amazingly received to the point that they had to uh, go ahead and provide a disclaimer saying that, listen, for the day, our inventory is finished. On the other hand, the Skechers saying thank you to frontline workers. And then you have Nike, which uh, came up with this very nice uh, way of telling people, listen, if you've ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now is your chance. So whether it's a retailer or a manufacturer or a brand, each one of these, they have changed the tack and the good thing has been that all of these have been noticed by media and, and you know, we typically think of promoting, hoping something goes viral. And guess what, like you know, when Crocs did this, it became a, a, a huge news story just a few days back. And this is a very nice snapshot of the healthcare workers who received free Crocs, sending them a thank you note. Uh, similarly, Nike's ads have been featured all over newspapers across the world. The idea is that an advertisement on social media is no longer in this era about just telling people what you sell. It's about sharing with consumers in response to their concerns, what is the role you are playing as a retailer or as a brand in this extraordinary time. Next is serve. You know, how do we serve using social media? Now, this is also one of those things which a lot of companies are now slowly beginning to understand, you know. Uh, and here are some statistics, you know, more than 150 million people every month send a message to businesses through Instagram Direct. 76% of the people who do message, they are messaging for a customer service or support request. And 64% of the people actually are explicitly saying that they would rather send an SMS than call. And if I'm not wrong, nobody enjoys pressing five different option buttons and then listening to uh, you know, what would be politely called as elevator music for 10 minutes before somebody talks to you. Interestingly, people have very uh, little patience, you know, especially because, you know, the younger people want social uh, services. 83% um, of them expect a response within a day and 50% of them expect a response within an hour. Uh, just one hour they want you to respond. Surprisingly, almost half the brands took longer than five days to respond, whether it was using Facebook or other channels. And 49% of consumers never actually get a response on a social media complaint at all. 
I think there is an echo. Uh, Somebody is saying, can you please work on it? Thanks. Uh, so what does social service look like? You know, here are four different examples and uh, there are different ways these companies are doing. So one is like Glossier is, is a makeup company. I'm just going to pause. I think we're just going to adjust the sound a little bit. Uh, there is still echo. Okay, now. Okay, um, let me just go ahead uh, with uh, this. Uh, so if you look at the response from Glossier, it's, it's clearly, you know, a consumer has sent in a request. It's not a complaint. It's not a request for any information, but it's like they're asking for a suggestion. And Glossier is saying, hey, you know, you DM, uh, DM, send me a direct message with a selfie, and I'll be happy to recommend a shade to you. Uh, and, you know, the customer actually did that, and it, it was quite fascinating how the company responded and uh, paid attention to one particular customer. Uh, if you look at, uh, now there is a complaint by a consumer to Best Buy saying that, hey, you know, I'm really disappointed with the Geek Squad. Now, Geek Squad is something which is very uh, sacred for Best Buy because that is a service uh, outfit of Best Buy that... The main job of that service outfit is that they provide consulting to consumers who don't know how to fix a 75-inch TV or don't know which laptop to choose. And it's a very popular service. Uh, and, you know, this is a very strongly worded complaint. And if you look at it, um, Best Buy has responded very politely. And they are asking the, question, the customer, hey, we sent this to you. Did you get the service required? And more importantly, it's, you should know, uh, that the person, the ser customer service assistant, has provided her name in this case. The idea is that customers want a, a specific name, not only just a name, but also they want uh, the connection that, hey, I'm not talking to a bot, I'm talking to a human. Uh, but more than that, what also people do is, uh, companies are doing is, they, they feed it into their analytics team and then connect it directly to their uh, service recovery efforts so that if there is any trend in any complaint, they can analyze it. The other two examples are from Old Navy, which is also a very cute way to sort of uh, show people how we are very, very close to you, we listen to you, and, and like, you know, here somebody is saying, hey, why don't you guys make a wedding dress, because it could be, uh, like, you know, which would be nicer if you guys could do that, and affordable. Uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, a customer has tweeted something positive, and Old Navy is actually amplifying that by celebrating, giving them high fives and clapping. Uh, again, uh, and thanking them. The idea is not just to provide service to address complaints, but also to actively engage through service uh, and spread the word. But th those, I mean, one cutting edge thing that I have seen uh, in recent times has been, there's a very nice company in India called Shopper Shop. Uh, now, when the, and their apparel, and apparel business is the one that has been really challenged. Uh, so they uh, got inspired by the use of WhatsApp and they launched something called as a white glove service. So if you go to the Shopper Stop website and you want specific inputs from a specific person, you can actually go and dial up this number that is given and the person on the other hand will respond to you. you they will share suggestions to you. They will show you the apparel that is available. So then either you can buy it immediately online or you can chat also at the same time or you can book a visit, make an appointment and go to the store and do the shopping. Now, all this looks very easy, but there is a lot of work that went behind the scenes. Uh, they basically uh, trained 300 personal shoppers over a period of five months before launching this and spent almost 43,000 hours of training for this. Now, you know, I, I mean, I was wondering, why would you spend so much time training people? Uh, I mean, this seems simple, right? Somebody calls you, etc. But if you, if you talk to them, they will tell you that there are so many nuances to how you chat in the, in the written text, how you are used to using the information system behind, and then how do you recommend under which kind of lighting, what kind of clothes, that all those things have to be done. And this 43,000 hours also included uh, the time of testing it so that it went smoothly. Ever since it has been launched, 15% uh, of the revenues 
are now of this company are now coming through this white glove personal shopper online service so this is like an example of taking uh, digital and social leveraging it for providing customer service to the next level uh, but you know companies are going beyond just providing service uh, they are also engaging actively their clients uh, what is engagement you know it's it's very important to understand that it's beyond just awareness or beyond just service it's about occupying or attracting somebody's interest or attention and getting them involved now what how are companies doing that so one example one of the biggest challenges with the covid was not just for apparel but also for the beauty segment uh, this is a when covid hit l'oreal was really badly badly hit uh, because you know the, you cannot go and try the cosmetics or other products and especially for products that you would like to touch and feel and even smell how do you convince customers to try something new just by going online and clearly just an online store will not work now in this sense l'oreal was a little lucky because they had just acquired a company which allowed virtual try-ons and individualized consultations live to their customers so the come the the technology they have is called modi face and this is what it looks like you know if you go online and especially they're leveraging an iphone even an older iphone with the cameras it can actually show you how different shades of lipstick will look the more advanced versions can actually give you even more direct input not just about a lipstick but also uh, what kind of foundations how will they look uh, but also the eyeliners different types of eyeliners how they will look on your face all while you're actually taking your photograph and on the phone this is this happens real time and the result has been that in e-commerce and this is the ceo saying we have achieved in 8 weeks what would have otherwise taken us 3 years to do uh, the conversations with customers have changed the perspective of cus- this was before covid you know they were talking about makeup lipsticks in store acne looking listening feeling and smelling having a dedicated makeup artist for a makeup session it's now from makeup it has shifted to skin care and inner beauty from lipsticks it's more becoming about face masks from in store to live streaming from acne to masking uh, by the way masking is acne that occurs because you have to wear a mask the whole day uh, and you know the feeling and smelling are gone uh, at least in places where you cannot test uh, it's becoming more about listening and learning and experimenting and of course you know rather than from a makeup session a lot of this has shifted to do it yourself home beauty the result uh, this company has done phenomenally well uh, their e-commerce sales are up by more than 30% and they account for 30% of their resume of their overall re- revenue now their online budgeting advertising budget has gone up and now they are very openly saying that hey moving forward a lot of these things are so sticky that we expect that 80% of consumer interactions from now onwards will happen online whether it's digital in general or social in particular and it's likely to remain at 30% you know our e-commerce social commerce sales uh, beyond uh, the western world china has been doing some very interesting stuff uh, this is another uh, very simple example of a company that has uh, ownership stake by alibaba it's a department store called in time they have 65 stores when the pandemic hit they were completely ordered sh- to shut down and you know they were they, their main business used to be tourists so how do we adapt to the situation they tied up with their uh, art owners alibaba and they created live streaming platforms 200 daily live streams at the height of the ep- pandemic attracting almost 220000 customers but the most important thing was that they trained 5000 of their staff to become live streaming performers and this was a very important aspect for the simple reason that there is there are some people who have a screen presence who are very comfortable in front of a camera and are very good at talking to people on camera through social media some are not so they they and they started an amazing effort to identify those people among their staff train them rigorously and then having these live streamings uh, what they also discovered very fascinating was that most of the customers they had on live streaming were not their usual customers these were younger people 90% of them are actually new customers uh, because earlier most of the customers were tourists or middle aged or slightly older people and that's why you know one of their uh, staff was noting that the a new customers type a lot faster and leave loads of comments and that is about engaging but you know what is the worth of engaging if the customer wants to buy and cannot purchase 
So they actually integrated and anything that you see, in fact, if you look in Mandarin, all these uh, labels are written. You, all you have to do as a customer is click and it directly takes you to the Taobao website to buy on the spot. And one of the things that uh, live streaming has shown is that a lot of purchases in live streaming are actually impulse purchases. So if you expect people to download coupons, print them out, go to a store, or like, you know, just recall the name of the product that they found in live streaming, the probability of conversion is very low. Uh, it's not just a department store, even the luxury people discovered it. There are two examples, Louis Vuitton actually did a celebrity event with uh, two of these uh, local Chinese celebrities. And what they did was they did not do anything live per se, other than having these celebrities talk about a fashion show that happened almost a month back and what they like and what uh, what were their favorite dresses, etc. Uh, parallelly, they have e-enabled their sales associated and turned them into key opinion leaders. Uh, on the other hand is, is uh, this lady, Yvonne, Yvonne Ching, who is a key opinion leader and she was engaged by Burberry's uh, to talk about their new collection. And it was incredible. All she did was she visited their store in Shanghai for a couple of hours. Within that, uh, there were 1.4 million views and within the first hour itself, the, all the products that were featured by this key opinion leader in the Burberry store were sold out. This was at a time when people could not come into the store. But live streaming has continued and th these are the forms of engagement that we are seeing through social and uh, digital media by companies and retailers. What they teach us very simply is that social media is going beyond advertising to make provide real value proposition. One value proposition of live streaming is that it provides a sort of an entertainment to uh, customers so that they can actually, uh, you know, they enjoy seeing the style of the presenters. Uh, they're leveraging technology to provide benefits. That means if you want something, you can buy it immediately in a seamless fashion. All of these things in many ways have been authentic to the brand. A lot of them are using their own employees or key opinion leaders who are exclusively tied to them in their particular category. That means these key opinion leaders are not allowed to go beyond and do competing brands at the same time for a fixed time period. Uh, of course, there is a lot of back-end work that they do. It's called, I call it the analog homework that you need to do to maximize the potential of digital. Next is how do you rethink uh, your business model? So this is a, a small example of a very simple SME. Uh, they're based in Detroit. They were selling scented candles and cocktails. Uh, you could either have the cocktail there or you could actually take the cocktail home. When the pandemic hit and the, the restrictions, the shutdowns were ordered, people could not uh, come to their store. So what they did was they actually said, you know, we will go and sell alcohol, our cocktails and sandals online. However, the local restrictions prohibit selling alcohol online. So this is what they did. They actually started taking orders through their social media pages. And because they could not sell alcohol, they actually started selling pre-mixes online, which you could come and pick up at their little outlet by appointment. And you just keep the stuff, uh, the product on that table you see in front of the gate. Again, fundamentally rethinking of how they were doing business. Uh, because one fallacy that we think uh, happens is that hey, so, uh, social media and digital are only for the domains of the very big companies who have billions of dollars. Yes, you know, companies that have billions of dollars do have a distinct advantage, but that does not mean SMEs cannot adapt using social media examples. Uh, and this is a very classic example, and they've been doing really good business, uh, and, you know, they've survived the toughest time. Now they're open, and, you know, but there's still the online presence is retained. Uh, they were selling 750 of these juice, frozen juice mixes every day. For a small business to be selling 750 of these every day in a time when their expectation was zero is quite remarkable. The idea very simply is you can rethink your business model even if you're a small SME. You don't have to be a multi-billion dollar company. Well, if you talk about multi-billion dollar companies, there is another example. We all know that malls have been the worst hit in the retail segment or in any business segment, up along with airlines, etc. Uh, so Siam Pivot is, is one of these huge changes in uh, Bangkok and around in Thailand. And when the pandemic hit, they were also feeling very stressed and challenged. And a lot of the companies, were uh, the retail shops were closed. Uh, 
so this is this was what their old business model was like you know they would uh, have events they would use web analytics and promos and you know they would provide maintenance of the mall and then you know come uh, the the retailers would rent or other service provider would rent the space at the mall but in the pandemic era that just disappeared so how do you what do you do uh, you have to give rent rebates if you don't give rent rebates the retailers will go bankrupt so this is what they come up came up with they said hey you know what why don't we become the e channel for our at least our retailers who are in our mall who cannot afford to do this so uh, for the restaurants which are the small independent restaurants they created a portal which was eat at home come uh, consumers could go on the portal order the food from the restaurant in one of their malls and get it delivered you could actually chat and shop similar to what uh, uh, shopper stop is doing in india you can call place an order and come drive by and pick up at the same time this is like uh, you know these are the snapshots of their initiative of their app uh, chat and shop you can talk to people uh, the special uh, shopping assistants you can follow them you can choose online all this they developed an app overnight and enjoy it at home also that is the example of a mall the last but not the least uh, is the example of a company that has had quite a journey in terms of understanding digital and social over the years however how they adapted to the covid uh, 19 crisis has been phenomenal to give a little background about uh, target target about 3 years ago 3 and a half years ago basically the new ceo came in and said we need to spend 7 billion dollars if we want to be truly on each channel and if we if we want to be able to compete against amazon and uh, walmart and others that day the stock tanked by almost 15% and the ceo was widely criticized and people panic like how do you you know 7 billion is a lot of money this has been their stock performance uh, the only company in retail which actually beats them is amazon but is amazon a retailer or is it um, a tech company which is also a retailer it's a open question but whether it's walmart or s&p 500 they have done much better than them um, their earnings have gone up at, you know people are saying before even before that people are saying hey this is a company that is doing great but what is this company uh, to very briefly they have almost 2000 stores 42 distribution centers they have 350000 team members um, that is their employees the typical customer is 40 year old college educated $64000 salary and 43% of their customers have children so you already know that the target customer the core customer is well off and has a bigger basket size this is what their q2 2020 performance was comparable sales from last year's same quarter were up by almost 25% digital sales were up by 195% comparable store sales which is a huge metric or was a huge metric was up more than 10% their earnings per share and etc all beat the market on all all time records what has this company been doing if you look at some of their other they have added 10 million new digital guests within just two quarters not only that they have increased their market share by more than 5 billion dollars that has been added their digital drive up drive through sales because they have that infrastructure grew up by more than 700% their shipping uh, one year target was shot over by 350% and across the board in different categories which they offer every category they have had increases in sales why if you dig deeper this is what this company did you know they they prepared this uh, offering for consumers before covid it was called restock that means they were prepared boxes based on analytics that the new there are certain customers who are loyal typically will order 75 to 80% of the same items with and uh, regularly over a two week period so they started preparing these boxes and they did this because they realized that 75% of the us population lives within a 5 to 10 mile distance of their stores with a ship, fixed shipping offer what this does is for them is that they they can manage their inventory better the customers loved it because they it meant flew a, a few clicks for them for their regular items for them it was very important because that meant for 10 15 different items they needed to make only one delivery and they could pre-plan that delivery in advance because based on customers behavior they knew what they wanted now if anybody who's in retail knows that omni channel etc sounds great but once you start taking into account your cost of uh, delivery 
the profit model can blow up. And the drive through, uh, they provided it in almost uh, 1100 locations, 2 million customers before the pandemic, now 10 million, and they were not giving any additional cost. And all this was based on the fact that they started looking at their stores, not just as stores, but a part of their warehouse system for their omnichannel uh, value for the customers. They acquired ShipIt because, you know, whether you like it or not, AI algorithms, analytics, etc., are critical for your supply chain, especially when you have multiple channels for the customers. They offered same day delivery and they have these private label brands. Some of them are multi billion dollar brands. But that's not all, you know, this is what they have done, right? But even now, as of today, you see this company listening to the consumers very carefully. This is what is on their website now. They're clearly telling how they are treating their employees with paid leaves. They're already committed not only to minimum wage, but they have also set aside a billion dollars for their employees' welfare, whether it is about backup care or bonuses, etc., wellness benefits. From a customer's point of view, they've taken three concrete steps. Safety, of course, is important, but also like in you know, a back to school assortment, which used to be for a shorter duration, will be running for a longer duration. For Halloween, they are extending for the Thanksgiving, however, their stores will be closed, which is a huge move for a retailer in the US because Thanksgiving is popularly also associated with the Black Friday when typically a lot of people go and shop like crazy. There are big crowds and it's almost like an occasion to visit a store just to see how crazy people go. But this time they're saying, you know what? We're not gonna have that. Given the current pandemic situation, we're gonna stop that. That is almost like a couple of billion, more than a couple of billion dollars that the company has decided to forego. They're saying, you know what? If you want something, you can order online. It's better that you and our employees both are safe during this unprecedented era. So what are the implications to all these different examples, etc.? One is like, you know, there is no one channel left. Whether, especially in the COVID era, different customers have different risk preferences. They have different safety concerns. Some customers are at a higher risk. So the companies that we have looked at and that I've been studying are the ones that are saying, you know what? We will go to the customers. We don't expect the customers to come to us. Let's go to the customers. Let's talk in their language. And the language could be in the channel they are, um, the way if somebody wants to know what will look good on them, we will talk to them directly. We'll apologize if we have made a mistake, but we will attend to the customers in time being very responsive. When we say online or social, we will provide them specific benefits, not just cute ads, but beyond that. You know, if you're ordering online and not going to the store, are you saving time? Are you saving them the effort of actually going to the store or effort of picking up items and having their items ready for a drive through If the customer is not coming and you're are you giving them lower prices? If not, then you know what are you providing them in as value add? In number of cases, when you look at these personal shoppers, they're not just showing them clothes, they're not just doing that, but they're also offering them recommendations. Hey, you know what, black will look good on you. This is my view. But from a company's perspective also, there are these seismic changes inside. One is simply is that if you think social and digital are beyond advertising, then you need to have the investment and the budget ready for that. There are no free lunches. Uh, you have to make it count. If your marketing effort, for example, is going into digital and social, are the KPIs reflecting them? AI and analytics are tremendous. They are very useful, but they are assistants in decision making. They are not here, at least right now, to replace decision making. Last but not the least, each of these companies has tried multiple options. And the mantra that is becoming important is you have to try different things some things will work, some will not. So you need to be agile, have constant experimentation, and fine tune your approach as time goes by. I'm dot on 40 minutes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, okay, already uh, questions are coming up. Okay. Veronica has asked, uh, okay, sorry I took your name, uh, but I hope you don't mind. Uh, but the example is, you know, these are all B2C market schemes, what are the B2B firms doing? Excellent question. The B2B firms have also been leveraging digital for remote diagnostics. Uh, in fact, uh, Samsung uh, tied up, uh, Accenture and Hyundai tied up for remote diagnostics so that uh, when they are looking at ships, they don't need to go on the dockyards. They can provide them directly remote diagnostics and only if there is a physical presence of a maintenance worker required will this dispatch a maintenance worker. That's one. 
another example is, you know, people talk about, hey, you know, but if I'm B2B, I don't need to be on Facebook, etc. You're right. You perhaps you don't need to be on Facebook, but there is uh, there is an approach of actually creating a thought leadership. So a lot of them are actually the B2B companies are using uh, LinkedIn to showcase their expertise in particular domains, uh, whether it is finance or it is uh, technology to share, for example, white papers or third party case studies to show how they are actually creating value for their customers using digital and social media. Those are the two examples on B2B that come to my mind. Okay. okay. If somebody wants to ask and switch on the mic, they can ask through that or only typing. I guess only typing, right? Uh, yes, Augusta, you can send me an email and I'll be happy to share a PDF of the slides with you. Okay. Hey, Rose, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you. Uh, you too. Thank you for this presentation. Just wanted to share that you know, uh, since since the uh, retail stores open, you know, retailers have reported a huge dip in online retail. I mm -hmm. guess that's you know, I reckon, and I think the the observation is that because Singapore is just so small, domestic market is just so so limited, uh, and geographically, you know, we literally have stores and malls at our doorstep. So. How can we actually see and expect such exponential growth in online retail, mm -hmm. similar in scale to those overseas? Because they are like miles and miles apart, you know, from where we stay in the stores. Yeah. So what you're saying is that why is there a dip or like can we expect the same in Singapore? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you know, you're absolutely right. We are a very dense city. And, and because of that, what has happened is that and people have been... We, were, we had a very strict lockdown also, so nobody could go out. Uh, so yes, you know, the dip in sales, uh, in online sales after opening up is to be expected. But what is also very important is to realize that certain categories have shifted more and more online and they're likely to stay there till, you know, the time that the vaccine uh, or like, you know, some simple cure comes up. So yes, there are differences between what we have in Singapore versus what other countries will have because they are so big and, and you know, the traveling distances are much uh, longer there so you're absolutely right there is there is but remember uh, it's very important to understand that online sales only tells you the output what is also important is that the impact of digital and social on your decision making process is is very critical so you might look online you might make an impression of the company based on their instagram feed which a lot of youngsters do and then you might actually just go ahead and complete the sale offline but that does not mean that online and social are no longer relevant for you as channels. Thank you. Welcome. But you know, it's a very expensive exercise, you know, on the digital marketing, uh, just to get your brand notice or have the engagement on social media. Absolutely, it is. That's why I said there are no free lunches. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, so the question is that most of the examples I've uh, shared are of tangible goods. So even like, you know, the Best Buy example that I shared, one of their main uh, value add, and in fact, one of their main reason for the reinvention was not just the fact that they were selling uh, a TV or a video game or a PC. It's, it's that the service that they're providing, it's the Geek Squad is actually a service provision. So, you know, that is an example of a service that has happened through online. Um, 
the the food outlets have been doing uh, wonderful stuff i mean if you look at just as an example study the behavior of mcdonald's during the pandemic online uh, they have been very conscientious they have been providing information very regularly on their opening hours uh, so i live near kalang and you know they were up and running on instagram and on facebook on the specific opening hours so they have been providing examples they have been moving very quickly online to provide uh, companies options in fact a lot of the local F&B uh, companies that I have seen have been phenomenal in terms of how responsive they have been into uh, getting up to speed on these online uh, ordering options. And some of them actually have become very independent. They are not using the third parties uh, and they have very strict minimum order um, uh, provisions. So they have been also been, uh, you know, there are different ways, but service companies have also been doing the same kind of work that some of these product companies have been doing. Uh, if there are no more questions, uh, thank you everybody for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Right, thank you everybody. Uh, so we have now come to the end of today's webinar. Thanks a lot, Professor Bill. So we hope you find the session helpful and uh, pick up some valuable points. Uh, regret for the uh, technical issue earlier. So if you wish to watch the uh, presentation again, there will be a recorded session posted on SMU Executive Development uh, YouTube channel. Yes, we do have our own YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, we will be sharing the links of, to the video as well in a follow-up email to you. So meanwhile, if there's any questions or any program you would like to find out, feel free to, to uh, drop us an, an email. Yeah. Thank you and uh, have, a, have a nice day. Bye.